Pinky and the Brain, yes, Pinky and the Brain. One is a genius, the other's insane. The laboratory mice, the genes and the mice, the Pinky, the Pinky and the Brain, 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 Brain. Jim Brain, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. Hello, Bots and Books fans, this is Scorp1701, and tonight we are going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Animaniacs Ultimate Pinky and the Brain. Yes, this is going to be a double feature featuring those adorable little lab mice who dream of taking over the world. And this review was made possible by the good folks at Big Bad Toy Store. Right now, they are having a huge sale on Super 7 Ultimates. I encourage you to go over there, check out what they have on sale. You can find some awesome toys for 50% off or even more. I was able to snag both of these at such a great price. So if you're looking for some Super 7 Ultimates, check out Big Bad Toy Store while the sales go on. But for now, let's get back to our review. If you didn't know, all Super 7 products come in this cardboard mailer box. It's very nice, it's very sturdy, keeps the figures safe inside, but it's basically just a brown box. It has the Animaniacs on the front. You have the character's name, either Pinky or the Brain. In the bottom left-hand corner, you have ages 14 plus, and on the bottom right, you have Super 7. There is nothing else on this box till you get to the back of the box, and on the back of the box, you just have some credits for the box and a barcode. But like I said, this is just a mailer box and the true treasure is inside so when you open up the mailer you get these two awesome blue foiled boxes and they are so beautiful you have the animaniacs logo right here on the front you have brain and wacko and yakko and Pinky and Dot all sitting outside there. You have ages 14 plus. You have the character's name, Pinky, the brain. And you have Super 7 here at the bottom right. On the top of the boxes, you have Ultimates. And there is nothing on the sides. We'll just use one. Until you get to the back, you get contents, one figure with accessories. And you have Super 7 right here at the bottom right. And on the bottom of the box again, like the mailer, you do get some credits for the box and a barcode. And that is really cool. And as you can see, these boxes are fairly large and uh, the brain box is fairly large, larger than the pinky box. And I guess that to hold his huge brain. <laughs> so to get these out, now this is a slip cover. And if you lift up the slip cover, the figure will emerge. And wow, there you have the awesome Pinky, and he looks so cute. But let's not forget his partner in crime, the brain. And we'll lift this up and see. Wow, there is the brain. And these are beautiful looking figures, even in the box. That is so great. So take a look at the top of the boxes. You have ages 14 plus. You have Super 7. Oh, sorry about that. Some uh, technical difficulties. You have Animaniacs, and then you have Pinky and the Brain. That is so cool. On the left side of the box, you just have them breaking out of the cages. Nothing too cool there. And then on the other side is the same. Nothing changes on the bottom of the box because it is just uh, the same bottom. The top, you just have a hole so that light can get through there and you can see them. But when you come to the back of the boxes, you have some awesome animation drawings of Pinky and the Brain. And that is really cool. I love these two. This was just a hilarious show. When I was growing up, Pinky and the Brain, they, it was so popular, it got its own show from the main Animaniacs show. So technically, this could say Pinky and the Brain instead of Animaniacs, but they're going with Animaniacs and that's fine with me. But enough of me talking and enough of seeing these figures in the box. Let's get them out and see how they're going to take over the world. And here we have these ridiculous rodents out of the boxes and they come with a slew of accessories of the Altu because that's why it's ultimate. So when I have two awesome characters that we're going to take a look at, we will do them one at a time and we will start with that lovable narfer, Pinky. 
And taking a look at Pinky, he stands just over six and a half inches tall, and he is basically a huge lab mouse. Yes, he is completely white, and he has some flesh tone for the inside of his ears. He has some bright blue for his eyes and little bitty pupils there. He's got a little tuft of hair standing up. Nice uh, red nose, and if you come down to his mouth, it's a nice smile on this head, and you got some two buck teeth sticking out there. That is really cool. Zoom in so you can actually see the cuteness. That is nice. I love it. And then he's basically just all white all the way down until his hands, which are a nice fleshy tone, and his feet, which are nice fleshy tone coming around to the back of the figure all white and you do get a nice tail that stretches out it's about four inches long so that is really cool i love it all right he is cute and that is pretty much all pinky looks like moving on and for articulation, starting at the head, the head can go around 360 degrees, and it has some wiggle waggle to it. It can look down a little bit, it can look up a long way, and that's pretty much it. Coming down to the shoulders, the shoulders can come up from the body and then back down. They can go around 360 degrees all the way around. There is no bicep swivel, but there is an elbow bend, and uh, that gives you almost 90 degrees. Not quite, but that is built into a forearm rotation, and that can go around 360 degrees. Coming down to your hand, and this particular hand can swivel 360 degrees, and it is hinged, so it can go in and out, up or down, depending on which way you have the hand. That is nice. Coming to the center of the body, he does have waist articulation. He can go around 360 degrees, and there is some wiggly waggly in there, so he can narf, 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 narf all day long if he wants to. Coming down to his legs. Now, the legs are a little tight on mine, uh, and they're very limited. They're a little small, but they can go up just a little bit, and then they can go back not so much because the butt gets in the way. They can kind of go out to the side. There is not a rotation there, but you do get a little bit of twist, not too much. Coming down to his knee bend. Now, his knee bend is, again, short of 90 degrees, but that's okay. I mean, it looks all right. It's as good as he needs, and that is built into what I would consider a boot cut, 360 degrees around there, bringing you to the foot. The foot can go 360 degrees around, and it is hinged, so it can go down, and it can go up a little bit, and it can fall off. That's all right. It goes right back in there. So coming around to the back, the final piece of articulation is Pinky's tail, and it can go around 360 degrees, and it can kind of hinge forward and backward, and that is cool. It's on a ball joint, and uh, that is going to be Pinky's articulation. Very good. Very fun. All right. Moving on. And for all alternate heads, Pinky comes with this very happy open mouth head as if he had just figured something out or came up with something funny. And it's basically the same as the other head, except his mouth is now open. And you can see some tongue painted in there and some dark brown for the inside of his mouth. So that is pretty neat. And he looks great wearing this happy head. I like it when Pinky is happy. It's kind of adorable. All right. And for Pinky's second alternate head, he comes with this really weird looking head with green and yellow eyes. And it either looks like he's drunk something in the lab he wasn't supposed to or brain smashed him because he got tired of his crap <laughs> so you got the ears kind of down and you got the different colored on the eyes and you have his tongue sticking out and his mouth is all wavy it's like Ooh. so something definitely bad happened to poor pinky when he has this head on so yeah i think it's still cute and funny so that is going to be your second alternate head moving on and Pinky comes with 10 total hands. I'm not exactly sure which are which, but you're supposed to have a set of neutral hands, a set of expressive hands, and a set of relaxed hands. So these three are those. Moving on, you do have a note-taking pair of hands. One comes with a pen that is molded into it. It's nice. It's blue. The other is empty, but you can put this notepad in there. And the notepad is kind of cool. It's just a pad of paper, and it has three little black 
hooks molded into it and basically he holds this and writes Brain's evil plans down when Brain dictates something to him. However, I don't know if Brain shouldn't do it himself because I'm not sure how reliable Pinky's note taking is. <laughs> You have a grappling gun hand, which holds the grappling gun. And the grapple gun is pretty neat. It's basically uh, uh, red and pink. And you do have the grapple coming here up the front with the little hooks coming to the side. And they're a lighter gray little hook. And uh, there isn't a trigger or anything, but it goes right into his hand. It doesn't shoot. It doesn't come apart. So it's there basically for look. So that is pretty neat if you want to have him grapple something or try to grapple something. It is pinky after all. Not sure how his success rate is. <laughs> and finally, you have a picture holding hand, which holds the picture of his beloved Farfanukin. <laughs> it's a very strange name, but then again, it's a very strange relationship. And take a closer look at the Farfanugan photo. There she is looking all happy. You got some couple X's in there. Returning the affection of Pinky. So that is always good. It's just basically a little square piece of plastic. It's kind of uh, wavy looking. And there's nothing on the back. And he holds this really well with the hand that's designed for it. So yeah, kind of glad they give this to us. Even though it is kind of freaky. <laughs> And that's going to be it for your alternate hands. Moving on. And Pinky also comes with this Bunsen burner. And it's on fire, heating up this beaker. And that's really cool. You got the plastic beaker there with some purple in the little stand. And the fire coming up the bottom. That is cool. It doesn't come apart or anything. It's just a solid piece. But uh, yeah, I really like this accessory. Can double for some other characters' lab equipment if you're interested. But then again, we'll get a lot of that. All right. Moving on. And speaking of more lab equipment, you do have these two beakers. They are connected by this little hose, and it's really neat. One blue, one green, and they kind of meet in the middle up there with different shading on the hoses. And yeah, I think this was in a couple of the episodes. It may have been in the intro. I can't remember. A lot of these uh, items are episode-specific or intro-specific, so it's been a while since I've actually seen the show. But even though I don't know where this comes from exactly, it's still cool nonetheless. All right, moving on. And for Pinky's last accessory, he comes with this little uh, stand. I think this was a little light that they would click and touch these buttons, and I think it would light up. I can't remember where this is actually from or what episode, but it's nice. It's one solid piece. You got some orange and some yellows on the front, and you got the buttons are yellow. And then you have the light bulb here, which is really neat, but if you look around, it's not actually plugged in all the way, so that might be dangerous, and it's molded like that, so you can't push it down, even though you'd probably want to. And nothing on the bottom, so yeah. That is pretty neat little thing to have. All right. Moving on. And that's going to finish it up for Pinky. Now, let's get to the brains behind the team. Or, or oh, excuse me, I meant, uh, let's get to the brain behind the team. And taking a look at the brain, brain stands approximately four and a half inches tall. But it's interesting that his head extends about four and a half inches. And that is crazy. This guy's head is so huge. It is very hard to get him to stand. You could definitely say he is top heavy. <laughs> so take a look at the side of his head. He has nice white ears. They have some flesh tone in there. Coming around to the front of him. Nice red nose. His eyes are fleshy with some black dot pupils and same on the right side coming down his body is all white his hands and his feet are flesh tone coming to the back nothing that you wouldn't expect except he does have a nice tail that zigzags and it gives him a good counterbalance so i'm actually using the tail to kind of make sure he doesn't fall over so yeah this is a really nice very cartoon accurate look at the brain all right, moving on. 
And for articulation, starting at the head, the head can go around 360 degrees. It does wiggle, waggle, so he can look up a little bit. He can look down a little bit. He can look left and right and wobbly. So that is good. His arms do come up from the body and then back down. They do go around 360 degrees if you get them away from the giant head. <laughs> you do have an elbow bend. Not exactly 90 degrees, but that's okay. Built into a forearm rotation. 360 degrees there. Coming down to a hand, which is 360 degrees. And hinged, so it can go out and in. And up and down, depending on which way you got it. You do have a waist articulation. Gives him 360 degrees of rotation at the waist. And it's kind of hard to grab onto, but it's there. Coming to his leg, his leg is on a hinge, so it can go up a little bit, and it can go down a little bit. It can go out to the side a little bit, and then back in. You do have feet rotation, 360 degrees, and they are hinged. So you can go up a lot, and then back down a little bit. So if this is your standard right here, then you got like one click down. There is no knee bend because the legs are so small, you couldn't get a knee bend in there. So bottom of the feet does have peg holes. I don't think I noted that on Pinky, but he also has peg holes on the bottom of his feet. And you might need a stand, depending on if you can get your balance on Brain right. All right, that is Brain's articulation. Moving on. And coming to Brian's accessory, the first accessory we're going to take a look at is his alternate head. And this is a head with his mouth open, and so he is either laughing maniacally or he's angry. I'm not exactly sure, but it does remind me of when he says, We're going to take over the world! <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, very nice, very crazy. I like it. He looks even more maniacal when he has it on. So if you like a crazy looking brain, there you go. All right, moving on. And that will bring us to Brain's alternate hands. Now he has a set of neutral hands. He has kind of like an angry, I don't know, I'm going to get you hand. He has a pair of fists. He has a pair of item holding hands. One could hold his pointer. And this pointer is very small. It's nice. It has a brown handle and it's pointy. So Brain could obviously hold this and point things out and try as hard as he might to make Pinky understand. But I think it's a lost cause. One hand can hold his paper clip. And this is a nice paper clip. It's basically just a single piece. It doesn't open or close or anything. It's just molded as a paper clip. No paint or anything. And this is what he used to escape his cage. On the later episodes, the first couple of the Animaniacs let him out. But Brain was very resourceful. He has a beaker holding hand. And Brain comes with three beakers, a green, purple, and yellow, and they're various sizes and shapes. And he can hold each and every one of them as he sees fit. And he can make Pinky drink things and uh, experiment with things and blow himself up if he was so inclined to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like the different uh, beakers and the shapes, and it's kind of fun to be collecting a huge lab set. And he has a magnet lever throwing hand, and that is really cool. And if you were an avid viewer of the show, you would know that at the end of the intro, Pinky and Brain would be on the Earth, and Brain would have this huge magnet there. He would throw the switch, and Saturn would come crashing down. So that may have been one of his plans to take over the world by crushing it with Saturn. I don't know. But this is really nice. It's a magnet. You got some grays and some reds up here, some more grays. You got these little tubes that are connected to it. You got this lever on the side here, and yes, it does move. It's very articulate. It. I like that. The magnet itself does move left and right. You could technically get it 360 degrees, but these tubes are connected into this base here, so that would wrap itself around, and that would kind of 
break it and then you have some gauges here which are really nice i like it this is a fun huge accessory nothing on the bottom but brain can stand here and throw this switch and bring down saturn to his heart's delight so yeah i really like this thing all right and these are going to be brain's alternate hands moving on and for another neat accessory brain comes with this earth keychain and it's really neat you got the globe right here and there's north america i'm not even gonna go into this because you'll see how bad that my geography is and that is really cool and uh it's connected to a chain and you can put your keys on here i don't know if i would actually use it for a keychain because this a uh, little plastic piece here may break off on you and then you'll have it broken but you know you can if you want to i'm not going to tell you what to do with it but uh, anyway i think it's really neat and i guess you can have like brain from looking down at it with contempt of you will be mine <laughs> but, uh, anyway it's pretty cool accessory moving on and finally, Brain comes with tonight's plan, and it has a rocket ship, and Pinky and the Brain, and they're going to go and steal the rocket ship, and circle around, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's more to this plan that's pretty neat. It's basically just a little piece of cardboard, and there's nothing really on the back, and you can hang this somewhere if you got like a little uh, cage set up with them. All right, moving on. At long last, it's finished, Pinky. Oh, what's that, Brain? The interdimensional portal. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, thanks there, Brian, but I don't have enough hats for each day of the week. No, Pinky. <sighs> when we walk through this gate, it will take us to other dimensions, other places, more worlds to conquer and take over. Oh, like multi-choice and the multiverse, like... Eh? Right, Pinky, like the multiverse. Now, let's go through and see where we wind up. And for comparison, here you have Pinky in the Brain with the 97 Wolverine, Retro Carded Spider Man, the Thor vs. Destroyer Thor, and the VHS Cyclops. A little comparison with some Marvel Legends, and they look okay, if not huge. Moving on. And here Pinky in the Brain is with some DC Multiverse characters. Superman, Green Lantern, Flash, and the DC Essentials Batman. Very cool. Moving on. And for comparison, here you have them with the Super 7 Thundercats. Lion-O, Tigra, Shitara, and Panthro. Probably welcoming them to Third Earth as mouse people. There's all sorts of people on Third Earth, so they'll fit in well right there. <laughs> Alright, moving on. And for a final comparison, here you have them with a variety of Ninja Turtles. You have the NECA Toon Turtle and the NECA Movie Turtle. You have the Super 7 Turtle and the brand new Mutant Mayhem Turtles. So I think they would be welcome there as mutant rats. Maybe Splinter can teach them something and you have a Rat Pack. <laughs> Get it? Rat Pack? Alright, that was bad. Moving on. And this has been the Super 7 Animaniacs Ultimates, Pinky and the Brain. And they are quite an interesting little group of figures. I say little, but according to the other scale, you could say six to seven foot mice. <laughs> if you compare them with the other figures that we did tonight. And uh, they come with a slew of accessories. That is one thing that you could always guarantee for Ultimates. You're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. And I think even more so with these guys because, well, there weren't that big of figures as it were. And they wanted to make it worth the price. So they threw in some rather large accessories with these two. And I really liked playing with these guys. The figures themselves were very nicely done. They are sculpted well. They are molded well. The articulation is somewhat hindered because of the smallness of the joints. But you're not really going to be able to do anything about that because this was the best scale that they could do these guys. 
guys in. If they did it any bigger, it would just be ridiculous. And if they did it smaller, you weren't going to be able to do anything with them. The accessories are fantastic. The beakers, the little character-specific items, like the picture of Farfanugan and Brain's plan was kind of neat. The huge magnet, I love that. Grappler gun, the keychain world. There's a lot of cool stuff in this set. The alternate heads, I liked them. The alternate hands is where I really ran into a problem when I was changing two of Pinky's out. The tabs broke and that was not pulling it out, which is what I would expect, but the tab broke actually inserting it into the wrist. And I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but it happened the same way twice. So then I started kind of twisting the hand all the way in, and I didn't have a break after that. But if you're not too careful with these tabs on the hands, they may snap off on you. In order to get the tab out of Pinky's forearm, I did have to cut the forearm a little bit. And fortunately, I was able to put it back to where the hand pegs I still have will lock in there so it's not a complete disaster so I can put hands in him and he looks okay but that is something I did want to warn you about if that's the worst thing that happens with this set I'm happy with it and I'm glad I picked it up. And if you're looking for these figures to add to your collection, you can find them right now at Big Bad Toy Store on sale for $27.50 each. Yes, $27.50. These usually retail at $55, so that is about half off. And if you've been looking for these figures, you'll kick yourself if you don't get them during this sale. And if you're looking for other Ultimates from Super 7, check out this sale, Big Bad Toy Store has a lot of ultimates to offer up. They have Ninja Turtles, they have Transformers, G.I. Joe, Toxic Avenger, The Simpsons, Wrestling, Thundercats, Silverhawks, Power Rangers, pretty much everything that uh, Super 7 has put out in Ultimates. A lot of it is on sale, so check it out. I don't know how long the Big Bad Toy Store sale is going, and I actually got a Ninja Turtle that we're going to be reviewing shortly, but enough about that, and that's going to wrap it up for this video on Pinky and the Brain. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a good night, and until next time, keep playing. Narf! Where are you going, Brain? Back to our cage, Pinky. We must plan for tomorrow night. Why? What are we going to do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world.